All right, good morning, everybody. It is that time yet again. Get ready for Investigation 8. Something a little bit different. Today we're talking about graphing points on a coordinate plane and transformations. So let's see what we got in front of us. So today's Socrative will be most of this investigation. You will need two coordinate plane worksheets for lesson activity 1A and 1B. You want to pay attention carefully. I'm going to explain each section, then hit pause when I tell you to, and answer the questions I ask you to in Socrative, and this will be your grade. Go slow and careful. Rewind if you don't understand something. So to kick it off right now, we find out that if we draw two perpendicular number lines, so if they intersect at their zero points, we create an area that's called a coordinate plane. Any point within this area can be named with two numbers, one from each number line. So we have a number line going horizontally, this is referred to as the x-axis, and a number line going vertically, that's referred to as the y-axis. Where they meet, is always going to be zero, zero. So on coordinate planes, the horizontal number line is called the x-axis, and the vertical number line is the y-axis. The point where the x-axis and the y-axis intersect is called the origin. Its coordinates are zero, zero. Where they intersect is the origin. This is also can be found on page 522 of your book. So in coordinate planes, the numbers in parentheses are called coordinates, and they give a point's address on the coordinate plane. The first number in parentheses gives the point's horizontal position along the x-axis. The second number in parentheses gives the point's vertical position along the y-axis. So what I mean by that, if I'm looking at this point here, it's labeled 7, 2. I go along the x-axis first to 7, and then go vertically up 2. Or the same thing over here. If this guy is labeled 2, 7, I always start at the origin, I go horizontally over to 2, and now vertically up to 7. So two little reminders here. Always list coordinates in parentheses and always name the x-axis its horizontal position first. The big mistake I will see kids make is they will get these two numbers inversed. So, Open up a new tab in Safari by pressing the plus sign in the top right hand corner and log in to Heinzekrev. All right, so we want to refer to this coordinate plane to answer problems one through five in Socrative. This can also be found on page 522 of your book. And question number one is going to say the coordinates of point A are zero, zero, point A right here. What is the name for this point? And the hint that I'm handing out here is you might have to reread the blue vocabulary words on the bottom of page 522. So now hit pause, tab over to Socrative to answer question one. All right, welcome back. We are still looking at the coordinate plane on page 522 of your book. And it's going to say, refer to this coordinate plane to write the coordinates of each of these points. So they want to know the coordinates for point B. Hit pause, tab over to Socrative to answer question two. Question three, more of the same. What are the coordinates for point C? Hit pause, tab over to Socrative to answer question three. 
Still using this coordinate plane, remember to use parentheses and write the x horizontal axis first, then the y axis number, and tell us what's the coordinates to point D. Hit pause, tab over to discretive to answer question four. And number five, give us the coordinates for point E. Hit pause, tab over to Socrative to input the coordinates for point E. All right, moving on to something different. If you're following along in your book, it should be on page 523. And it says, below is a design drawn on a coordinate plane. To draw the design, we'd first start at coordinates 5, 9, so you go along the horizontal axis to 5 and the vertical up to 9. And we would then connect the points in this order. They go 5, 9, then down to coordinates 2, 1, and then over to coordinates at point F, over to the coordinates at point G, over to the coordinates at point H, and finally back up to coordinates 5, 9. And anytime you're given directions on how to draw lines between your coordinates, you want to insert a little arrow between your coordinates. So now they're going to tell you to write the coordinates of each of these points from the star design above, just like we were doing on two through five. Question number six, they want to know the coordinates for point F. Again, remember to use parentheses, write the X horizontal axis number first, then the Y vertical axis. So hit pause, tab over to Socrative to answer question six. And one more, just like the other one, what are the coordinates to point G? Hit pause, tab over to Socrative to get question number seven inputted. All right, one more just like that one. What are the coordinates to point H? Hit pause, tab over to Socrative to answer question eight. Now something new, activity 1A, Graphing designs. This is the part where we're going to have to do it on our worksheet. In the book, it's at the bottom of page 523. And the directions I'm giving you is, on the coordinate plane worksheet, graph each of the following points. Then make a design by connecting the points in alphabetical order. And they're asking you to label it what is the name for the figure? So write it at the bottom of the worksheet. In alphabetical order, that means I would be starting with point I, then I'd go to J, K, L, M, N, O, P. And don't forget to draw a line back to point I. So a little bit more about that. If your first coordinate is 7, 10, you're going to very neatly go along the x-axis first, over to 7, and then up to 10, right? And don't forget to label it. That's going to be point I. Then, once I have the label in, my next point that I have is going to be point J, right? His coordinates are 4, 10. So I'm going to go along the x-axis, then along the y-axis, over 4, up 10. But here's where some over-anxious kids always make mistakes. When you are connecting your dots, you want to go and use a ruler. So if I have the two points right now, points I and points J, Make sure before you start drawing it in, take a ruler between your two points and use the straight edge to connect them. 
don't go and draw it all in freehand. I will have another sheet and I will ask you to do it over again. So remember to label and connect the points in alphabetical order. And again, don't forget to write the name of the figure at the bottom of the worksheet. So hit pause, do activity 1A on the coordinate plane worksheet. Call me over to check when you're done. All right. Activity 1B, still on graphing designs at the top of page 524 now. And they're going to ask us to draw a polygon. And a polygon is any enclosed shape with straight lines on the coordinate plane. Be sure each corner, otherwise known as the vertex of the polygon, is at a point where the grid lines meet. Then, create directions to recreate your polygon. Your directions should consist of the coordinates of each corner listed in an order that will complete your design. Okay, so one small example here that I set up, and I will say you will have to come up with different shape or directions than what I did here. I don't want you just copying down mine. I used a square and the directions I have is point A is located at coordinates 3, 9, right? And then I drew my arrow to point B, which is located at coordinates 7, 9. Then I drew my arrow to point C, which is at coordinates 7, 5, and then I drew an arrow showing that I connect the line over to point D, which is coordinates 3, 5, and don't forget to give the directions to draw a line back to the beginning. So one more arrow up to 3, 9. Okay, so hit pause, do activity 1B, on the other coordinate plane worksheet, write your directions on the back and call me over to check when you're done. All right, welcome back. We're moving away from coordinate planes into something new called transformations. And this is all on page 524 of your book. And we start off by saying we can move figures on a plane by sliding them, turning them, or flipping them. These movements are called transformations and they have special names. And I'm here to tell you that they're gonna show up every day for at least a month. You wanna always go back and double check these names. If I slide a figure across a coordinate plane, the technical name is not slide, it's translation. If I turn it, that's called a rotation. Or if I flip it, is a reflection. Again, these are all on page 524 of your book. So let's go and demonstrate each one right now. The movement is slide, but that's not what I write down. The technical name is a translation. Now, translation is a noun. If I went with just the verb form of it, it would mean I translate it three to the right, or I translate six down. So the hint I'm telling you is when you describe a translation, remember to tell the direction that you're translating, either up, down, left, or right. Here I'm going to translate this triangle three to the right. One, two, three. Okay. The next movement we're talking about is a turn, but it's not really named turn. His technical name is rotation. When I actually do it, the verb form is rotate. And when I rotate something, you want to describe the rotation 
remember to tell the direction, either clockwise or counterclockwise. If you move something in the direction of a clock, this is a clockwise rotation. If I go the opposite direction of a clock, this is a counterclockwise rotation. And the last one up for transformations, the movement is described as a flip, but his real name is reflection. And the big thing to remember when you're describing a reflection, you got to tell what direction you're flipping it. Are you going to go and flip it left to right? Or are you going to go and reflect it or flip it up and down? So we're back into Socrative. Now take a look at question number nine. This figure shows triangle ABC, and the image of triangle ABC, if it was translated three units to the right, if I took this triangle and slid it over here, and they want us to write the coordinates of points A, B, and C before the translation and after the translation. And the trickiest part about this is the points must be in order. First give the coordinates for point A. It looks like point A would be over that many and up that many. Then points B, over, up. Then point C, nothing over, just up. Give all three coordinates before the translation, and then think, what are these coordinates after the translation? Going in the order of A to B to C. Think you got it? Okay, hit pause. Tab over to Socrative, answer question nine. All right, welcome back. Question number 10. It says, which transformation moves triangle A into the position of triangle B in only one move? You might want to look at your chart back on page 524. What type of move is going to be able to get that from A? to B. Go ahead, hit pause, tab over to Socrative to answer question 10 if you're ready. All right, welcome back. Take a look at number 11. This figure shows triangle ABC and its image after what type of transformation? If I took triangle ABC, the blue one, one move to get it to fit right here. Again, you might want to look at the chart on page 524. Okay, that is the end. You can only miss two in the Socrative portion of the investigation. So if you've gotten this far and you have more than two, you can have to tee it back up again. Any extra time, please work on any missing math after tests until everybody is all done.